Welcome back. This is part two of 3.7 on esters. We're going to start off with this science understanding. Condensation reactions are slow at 25 degrees Celsius. We need to be able to explain the use of heating under reflux and the use of a trace of concentrated sulfuric acid in the laboratory preparation of esters. So leading from that understanding, we can say that esterification is a slow reversible reaction at 25 degrees Celsius, what we typically think of as room temperature. That's why reactants are often heated under reflux. Reflux is the process to heat or react liquids at high temperatures without loss of reactants and products. Typically, if we heat liquids up, there's a chance that they're going to boil. They will form a vapor and that vapor can be lost to the atmosphere. By heating under reflux, this is going to increase the rate of the forward and reverse reaction so that our equilibrium is going to be reached faster. And it's important to note that sterification reactions are reversible reactions. To better understand what heating under reflux means, we're going to be looking at this diagram here. And we'll start from the bottom. We can see that there is going to be some type of heat source that's going to help heat up our reactants. We have the reactants contained within this flask here, as well as a couple other components like a trace of concentrated sulfuric acid and some anti-bumping granules. The heat that's being provided to the flask is going to cause the reactants and products to boil. This is going to produce some vapors and to prevent them from escaping out into the atmosphere, we have a condenser that is connected to the top of our flask. The condenser itself is a piece of glassware that consists of a tube within a tube. So around the outside, we have water that can flow around the inside tube that is actually open. It's important to have an open end so that you don't end up with a buildup of pressure. So as our reactants and products are being heated, they're going to boil, they're going to form a vapor, and the water that surrounds the inner tube is going to help cool down and condense those uh, vapors, condense them back into liquids, they're going to flow back into our flask here, and then the heating process can continue. Now before I mention that there are a few other components in here, so one of which is what we call anti-bumping granules, Anti-bumping granules, which are sometimes referred to as boiling chips, are typically added to prevent a phenomenon known as bumping. Bumping is essentially the process where you get the formation of very violent vapor bubbles, which can explode and it can cause solvents and liquids to shoot through the condenser through the top. The anti-bumping granules or the boiling chips essentially allow the liquid to boil less violently and help keep this in a more controlled fashion. One more thing I mentioned in the reaction vessel was a trace of concentrated sulfuric acid being added. That's because this acts as a catalyst and we know catalysts help increase the rate of reaction by providing an alternate pathway of lower activation energy. So if we were to look at our equation for the formation of an ester, we typically show some components above and below the double arrow we show H+, plus, which indicates the concentrated sulfuric acid being added. And we typically have heat or the word reflux to indicate this is occurring under reflux. For our final science understanding, esters may be hydrolyzed under acidic or alkaline conditions. You'll need to be able to identify the products of acidic or alkaline hydrolysis of an ester or polyester given the appropriate structural formulae. Hydrolysis is essentially a reaction with water. This results in the cleaving of chemical bonds within our ester and with other molecules that can also undergo hydrolysis, like carbohydrates and amides. You can think of hydrolysis essentially as the reverse of condensation reactions. So in the case of esters, condensation reactions result in the formation of esters from alcohols and carboxylic acids. Whereas a hydrolysis reaction would look at the reaction of an ester with water to reform the alcohol and carboxylic acid. Hydrolysis reactions can also be carried through heating under reflux to help speed up the reaction. As mentioned in the science understanding, this can occur under acidic conditions as well as alkaline conditions. We're going to start off with acidic conditions. 
So this means that you've got the addition of H plus or the presence of an acid. This is a reversible reaction. So what we have is our ester with water in the presence of an acid. It's going to be an equilibrium reaction or a reversible reaction. This bond here in black is going to break and it's going to then form firstly our carboxylic acid, which is shown in blue here, as well as our alcohol. So you can see really this is just the reverse of a condensation reaction, which would go from the products back to the reactants. In terms of alkaline conditions, this occurs in the presence of hydroxide ions. The benefit of an alkaline hydrolysis is that it's non-reversible. One thing to point out is that we don't expect you to know how to write these equations, just namely determine the products upon acidic or alkaline hydrolysis. In the presence of hydroxide ions, we're going to get some slight differences. So our ester firstly is going to form what we call a carboxylate anion. However, our second product, which is the alcohol, is virtually the same as in acidic conditions. Typically, alkaline hydrolysis occurs through the addition of a specific hydroxide. So if, in our example, we looked at adding it to sodium hydroxide, instead of forming a carboxylate anion, we can say that it's going to form a carboxylate salt. The second product being the alcohol would stay as is. We're now going to consider a couple examples. Example five gets us to consider, draw the structural formula of the products of the acidic hydrolysis of the ester below. To do that, we firstly identify where our ester functional group is, which is here. In terms of where it breaks apart, it separates where this carbon to oxygen single bond is. And what we can see is that over to the left, we've got a single oxygen. So this is going to form the alcohol. Given its acidic conditions, this section of the molecule is going to form our carboxylic acid. So the first one we can see is an alcohol. The second one we can see is our carboxylic acid. This is our last example. So draw the structural formula of the products of the alkaline hydrolysis of this ester below. Again, let's identify our ester group. That's this one here. We know that the ester essentially will break apart or it will hydrolyze at this site here. So if you recall, this is the bond that forms to make our ester. So this is going to be the bond that breaks through a hydrolysis reaction. Having a look over to the left, we can see that there's a single bonded oxygen. So this is going to form our alcohol. Given its alkaline conditions, this section here is going to form our carboxylate ion. Starting off with our alcohol, we're just going to essentially add a hydrogen next to this oxygen here. There's our alcohol and this one would be ethanol. And to form our carboxylate anion, we still have the C to O double bond. We then have a C to O with a negative charge. The rest of the molecule stays exactly the same. So we have the structure of our carboxylate anion there. That concludes our work on 3.7 esters. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.